Peace and blessings. Zen Davis here with another video. And just going to give you guys a quick lesson. I am uh, keen, or shall I say, an expert in uh, neuroscience. I know a lot about the brain. Anatomy, neurophysi neurophysiology, neuroanatomy. I know about each segment of the brain from the prefrontal cortex to the limbic system to the frontal lobes. And I know about neurochemistry. You know, so if I had to give somebody the best advice, it would be to learn the brain because you're at an advantage because once you learn the brain, man, you, you learn how everything works in the universe. Here's an example. The reason why people who experience chronic pain the reason why they're difficult to be around anybody who's been in the vicinity or the presence of someone experiencing chronic pain you know that they can be very irritable irritable <laughs> irritable <laughs> you know they could be very irritable You know, they, they become snappy, demanding, antagonistic, hypercritical. You know, they also become critical of themselves. They experience fluctuations of emotion very rapidly, too. Now, to the layperson, they might get offended. And they might begin to distance themselves from the person who's experiencing chronic pain, which is very unfortunate because they didn't ask for the chronic pain. And I'm pretty sure they they hate the fact that they're behaving that way. They don't want to do it. They don't consciously do it. It's all about neurochemistry and neuroanatomy. So what I'm saying is what happens in the brain when you're experiencing long term pain, chronic pain is the amygdala grows. The amygdala is part of the brain where emotions come from, the limbic system. But the amygdala is what happens when you sense fear or threat. You know, like, you know, the amygdala is, is um, active when you're, when, you, when you're anxious, when you feel... Uh, when you feel like you're in fear. You see what I'm saying? And uh, the prefrontal cortex, its job is to control the amygdala. You know, it keeps the amygdala under control. Like, say, you, you, you go to your, you at work and your boss snap on you. Now your amygdala sense that as a threat. A threat to your survival because he has the power to fire you. So, if your boss yell at you, you you become uh, worried, anxious, and you might become angry. All those emotions correlate with the amygdala. But what happens is you so you want to punch your boss. You're like, how 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 in the hell is he gonna talk to me like this? You know, I'm doing my job. I should just go up there and just punch him. That's what your amygdala is saying. But your prefrontal cortex, which is the rationality part of your brain, the logical part of your brain, the decision-making part of your brain, it tells the amygdala, hey, you might want to chill. Because if you punch him, not only will you lose your job, you're going to be incarcerated. Okay? So, I'm going to calm you down. Because you don't want to do that. 
Now, what happens, some people, they become, they become, um, the amygdala hijack the central nervous system. That means the amygdala overpowers the prefrontal cortex. You know, and it punches the boss. Okay? But we're not, I'm not talking about an, an amygdala hijack. Well, yes, I am. So what happens in chronic pain is the amygdala gets bigger and the prefrontal cortex gets smaller. If you don't believe me, Google it. Research for yourself. I advise anybody who watch my videos to don't just take what I say at face value. If you feel any doubt, then you can research yourself. But the amygdala gets smaller I mean, I mean, the amygdala gets bigger, the prefrontal cortex gets smaller, so they can't control their emotions because the prefrontal cortex, you know, it controls your emotions. It uses logic and rationality and thought. If you're thinking of a complex problem, the amygdala is at work. I mean, the, the um, prefrontal cortex is at work. But chronic pain shrinks the prefrontal cortex and it expands the amygdala so they don't have the power to rationalize. They don't have the power to use logic because they're in so much pain. The amygdala is just on constant alert because the pain is unpleasant and it's considered a threat to your survival. And by your inability to stop the pain, it only magnifies the um, discomfort, which, which causes a perpetual cycle of... Uh, you know, in the in neuroanatomy, perpetual cycle meaning the pain cannot be stopped. The amygdala get is constant alert, and the prefrontal cortex becomes smaller. Because chronic pain is you know is twenty four seven for for a lot of people. So you might do something. And they might snap on you. Why? Because they're on constant alert. They're on constant survival mode. And it overpowers the thought process. It's, it's very scientific. It's very scientific. See, that's the advantage. And another advantage is, like, say... You're going against an opponent of some sort. It don't have to be a physical confrontation. It could be a confrontation of the mind, like a chess match. You two people playing chess together. One guy is very emotional, thinking he's going to win. Type A personality. Then you got a laid back dude who's playing. He's chill, calm, and he's not really braggadocious. He's just playing the game. Now, everyone knows, especially the um, Samurai Warriors, they know that a calm mind prevails. A calm mind prevails because when you're hyper-vigilant or when you're very hyper, very emotional, r rationality goes out the window. You can't think straight when you're overly emotional. Why? Because emotions come from the amygdala. Okay? Thought, calmness is the prefrontal cortex. So if you move off emotion, that means your amygdala is active and your prefrontal cortex is not. So you're going to make a wrong decision eventually. And then when you slip up, the person whose prefrontal cortex is active, who's calmly watching every move because there's no emotion, it's just logic, he will prevail because everything is clearer to him. When you're emotion, everything is, you know, it's fight or flight, honestly. It's, it's, you're, you're very intense. So if you want to prevail in anything against an opponent in in a in a fight, 
a physical altercation or in a game. Just, just, you need to calm yourself. You see? That's why when you guys see me do these videos, I try to calm myself, but I still, I'm still nervous. And I, and I, and I, and I allude to that almost every video I do because it's a reality to me. And, but in real life, you will see, you would think that I don't have emotions because I, I just, I, I train my brain to be at a certain um, set point. I'm not too high. I'm not too low. I'm always baseline. If I lost 200 subscribers, if this video got 20 thumbs down and one thumb up, it really, I mean, I don't, first of all, I can't control that. All I can do is do my best. But secondly, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Same way if you get 20 thumbs up and one thumb down, I mean, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm grateful, but it's not going to make me or break me because life is full of ups and downs. It's up to me to be stable in the storm of life. And I'm sorry that this video wasn't about St. John's Ward because I promised it would be. That's why I don't like making promises because promises are meant to be broken. This is not a cliche saying. It's not a cliche saying. It's actually a, a fact of life. So, uh, I hope I conveyed this message precisely with clarity. I hope it's conducive to your growth. I hope you find my, vi my videos entertaining. Um, if you have any questions about this video, because unfortunately I don't have a... I wish I had edit button. I, I wish I was a... I wish I took this YouTube stuff seriously because I would edit the hell out of my videos because I can articulate myself so much better through writing and when I don't have this damn phone staring at me. Like, I, I can really sit down and, and, and break shit down to you. <laughs> but when, I, when, this shit, when this shit is playing, I be freaking out like, damn. Like my video about the dangers of quiet people. That's at 10,700 views. Dangers of Quiet People is currently at 10,708 views. And El Thini for Anxiety is at 10,400 and something views. So, so in a, in a um, irrational way, I feel, I feel pressure to make good videos. Like, I feel like even though I'm not being compensated, so it's like, what the fuck? I feel like my videos has to be perfect. I'm a perfectionist. I just am. I'm a perfectionist. So I'm about to close. I hope this, if you have any questions, any inquiries, you know, comment. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe. Zen Davis and I'm out. Peace.